Good morning, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. This should be the beginning of part eight. Well, you know, I, I, in the last part, I think I remember saying that um, I've not done any service work to that blade at all. Uh, that was just the way that blade had been setting, you know, in the woods for all those years. What I was going to do is I'm going to do something a little bit different. Even though I'm going to mark them like the old man showed me how to mark them years and years ago, uh, you know, with the, with the chalk lines and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to do it a little bit different as far as actually sharpen them. Um, I come across a deal 30 years ago, I had an old tractor, it was a, a B International Cultivision, and he stopped by the house one day and said, you know what, I got a all sharpening uh, set up, I trade even for that old tractor. Well, I said, heck yeah, man, what the heck, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, what the heck, I ain't gonna use that old tractor for nothing. So uh, we traded even, sight unseen, you know, uh, we drug the tractor over to his house, he only lived half a mile away, and I'd loaded up the stuff and brought it back over here. So what we're gonna do, this is gonna be the maiden voyage of a, um, a bell saw, a circular saw sharpening uh, setup. But uh, for those bell saw fans, it's a, a model 10 452 uh, sharpening and setting uh, setup. It'll also um, sharpen planar blades, joiner blades, uh, just virtually any any type of a blade at all, uh, circular or flat. Well, here it is. It's a, uh, it's a bell saw, model 10 452. Um, it's essentially a bench grinder that tilts back and forth. It's got a, uh, a, a stop on it. Uh, here's your handle that you um, you actually rock it forward into the saw blade with, and you can see now how the stop stops. So that'll come all the way into your uh, mark that you've got for the, for the gullet radius so that you can get the shape of the teeth all exact, uh, the exact depth. Uh, and you can see this apparatus over here sticking way out this, this pin right here, and then this long arm that goes over here, and then it drops back down underneath and then uh, uh, holds itself and you tighten it up so it, it, it puts a little bit of pressure on it so it don't move back and forth by that nut down there. But at any rate, up here is where you set the blade. Uh, the, the, the bore of the blade goes right on top of this and you uh, take this little fella right here and tighten that right down, slide it right down the board, tighten it up, and then the blade comes across here. This is a steady rest or a post that the edge of the blade will, or, or portion of the blade will set on so that when you're pulling down on the uh, on the grinding wheel, uh, the blade doesn't go to chattering and jumping all over the place. Uh, so that you adjust, you know, to the height of whatever whatever blade you put on there. And then this right here has got a, a slide. There's a, a thumb nut on the back side of this guy right here, and it'll slide from all the way out here for a, a big wide blade all the way into into that area there. But uh, it's even got a uh, a retirement light. You know, which is really pretty cool. That's, uh, I guess it comes standard with them. I don't really know. But, um, and then this side over here, if you take a look down at the bottom, you can see that there's a, a big clamped apparatus, whatever. And then there is a, 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 a big section that slides down into there, and it's infinitely adjustable for angle and height and, and everything. It's actually a compound angle adjustment. And that's where you, uh, you can sharpen 12, all the way up to 24 inch planer blades on that over there. Now I did a video here a while back <coughs> on uh, showed you how the old man showed me how to uh, to to reshape these teeth years and years and years ago and uh, it's a technique I've used a number of times over the years and um, I did tell you you know that that he always went dra directly across the center of the arbor from the opposing tooth to the opposing tooth and then he used a tri-square and then marked a 45 degree angle off of the back of that. Um, I checked this one here. This one still has a factory with very well shaped teeth, and that angle is actually 43 degrees. Um, I used um, I used one of these little jobbies here, and then adjusted it to the angle. And I checked multiple teeth, and went to a protractor, and it's 43 degrees. So, uh, in this particular case, I think 43, 45. I think it's going to be adequate. But at any rate, I probably won't film marking uh, all of these teeth. But uh, essentially, what you need, what 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 we would do is um, take your soapstone and then mark all the way across, just like that, tip to tip on the teeth. And you'll see, whenever we use that machine over there, how these, uh, these become the witness marks, like I referred to in that other video. Uh, these become the witness marks that you use your peripheral vision to sight down so that you can keep the, uh, the teeth being uh, reasonably close to, uh, to accurate. Now again, this is an old time, <laughs> blacksmith way it's not uh it's not the tried and true proven way you know uh with all the 
high accuracy of, of uh, sharpening shops of today. But this is how the old timers did it to get by, and this is how, uh, how I learned from the old man. The big difference I'm gonna do on this, instead of using my lathe by hanging the blade horizontally in line with a half inch gumming wheel on my wood lathe, uh, which is the way that, that the old man showed me, uh, you support it with a chain right down through the arbor, and you hold the blade horizontally, and then you slowly swing it and index it into and out of the, um, the rotating wheel, the rotating gumming wheel, uh, to, to adjust your gullets and then shape the backs of your teeth. But uh, the big difference between that and this is we're going to be using that, uh, that Foley bell saw uh, sharpening system over there. And, uh, and that's, that's, we're going to be somewhat modern uh, compared to what we used to, used to have to do. Well, I got all the lines cut uh, all the way across every, uh, every, uh, every set of teeth. And back in the day, uh, when I was laying these out at 45, like, you know, the old man showed me, uh, I went about the business of making me a little bit of a larger uh, 45 or 90 and 45 degree uh, square, just because it was easier just to flop that big thing down there and, and follow it out instead of a, a smaller square like this. So uh, to keep with tradition, I went ahead and made a little bit of a larger uh, 43 degree square because that's what, by using that uh, that bevel square, I was able to determine the uh, the angle is. So I just made a larger uh, 43 degree um, square. By comparison, you can see how far two degrees makes in a so much of a distance. So it's a it's a subtle change, but I still don't think it's a big a big deal. You line the tip of the tooth along with that witness mark, and come right down the back side of the tooth and put your, your line. You can pivot right there, rotate it to the next one, make sure you're on that original mark, do the next one. Pivot it, rotate to the tip, make sure you're on the mark, and do it again and again and again all the way around the, uh, all the way around. Now are, now are all these marks absolutely necessary? I would say probably not. Once I learned how to use that bell saw, saw sharpening uh, setup, because once you get your angles and everything set, um, unless you're really rough on stuff, uh, it shouldn't move. But uh, bear in mind, whenever we were doing this uh, before, we're doing it all freehand. We're doing it all freehand, hanging from a chain uh, on top of a wood lathe with, a, uh, with the grinding wheel mounted on the wood lathe. So we had to have these witness marks uh, for every individual tooth just so you could uh, maintain the semblance of, uh, of the angle. <clears throat> now, is this really the proper way of doing it? I don't know. Who's, who can say? But like I said, them old timers, they had to learn how to, how to, how to do it uh, or how to do things, you know, just to survive. They couldn't just call people to come in and do everything every time they needed something done. You know, they developed these old techniques and I'm one of the fortunate uh, ones to, and my brothers, uh, to have been uh, the beneficiary of some of that uh, that hand-me-down information. <laughs> Again, is this absolutely perfect? Are the angle's absolutely perfect and correct? Hell no, they ain't. But you know what? It's a heck of a lot better than uh, trying to freehand it with an angle grinder, uh, you know, or, or or anything like that. Now, I measured the existing gullet. This particular one was a, a three-eighths. So I had to dig through that stack of uh, that stack over there on the table saw of gumming wheels until I come up with the right one. And here I found uh, right here. It says right on it in particular. Said it is a saw gumming wheel, eight diameter, one inch bore. Of course, it's got a half inch by one inch bushing in it, but eight inch diameter by three eighths in width. So this is going to cut the uh, the the size gullet that we need in that blade. We're going to start off by setting the blade on there and try to get the right adjustments. Um, like I said, this is a virgin, uh, virgin voyage. I've got to make sure that support pin right there is, uh, is coming in contact with the bottom of the blade. And I've got to make sure that my stop, my, uh, my stop will stop me right on the, the, uh, gullet radius line that I've marked all the way around the perimeter. Now you can see how our witness marks come into play by lining 
the edge of the grinding wheel. Set my lock nut down here on the on that. Make sure this is tight. When we were grinding them on the lathe, um, for whatever reason, it seemed to generate a little more heat than what this one's doing. I don't know if it was uh, the uh, the RPM, the difference in the RPM, or the difference in the grinding wheel. Uh, I just don't know. But uh, the old man would always start like right here, and he would grind about three teeth, and he would spin it 180 degrees and grind about three teeth, and then transfer it 90 degrees, grind about three teeth, and then 180 degrees again, do three teeth, and then come back to start. And that's the way I've done it every time that I've done it along the lathe, simply because it does generate a little heat. For whatever reason, this process does not seem to be generating any heat at all. I can actually grab a hold of the uh, the blade as soon as as soon as I cut a tooth. Um, but at any rate, I think you can see it's going to work halfway decent. Thought maybe I better move the light to the other side. Maybe you could uh, see just a little bit better. Of course, it doesn't help me. I think my support pin under there is kind of vibrated loose. I got to tighten that step screw up a little bit. It's allowing too much vibration there, and I think I've uh, walked just a little bit. So there you have it. We've actually uh, we've actually uh, cut the gullets out on uh, every one of the teeth. Never even counted the teeth, but uh, those are already done. So now I'm going to uh, adjust around to where I can uh, shape the front of the tooth. All in all, I'm really pleased with how the uh, the old bell saw performed. Okay, now this next step is going to be a little more challenging. Uh, if you can see, the blade is tilted. Um, you can see it's tilted to the right hand side. Now, whenever you sharpen the teeth by hand, I kind of estimate 10, 12 degrees or so in opposite every other tooth in opposite directions. So what I've done on this is I've taken the adjustment, the bevel adjustment underneath here. I have to get my flashlight there so we can kind of see. And if you can see the bevel adjustment under here, I've set it for roughly 10, maybe 11 degrees. It's a little hard to tell exact, but that's going to result in uh, a bevel in those teeth. Now, here you go. You can see the, the angle of the blade right there. Um, another point, you can kind of see the benefits of the witness marks uh, now, because as I'm rotating uh, the blade and then tilting that, that, uh, that grinder into the tooth, uh, you can kind of see how you use your, your, vi your peripheral vision to, uh, to, to make sure that you're kind of in line with those marks. Now, were these marks necessary? Like I said before, probably not. But uh, will I do them again? Yes, I certainly will. I'll continue to do them until I get extremely uh, familiar with how to use this, uh, this tool and adjust it to where it, doesn't, it don't uh, vibrate and move a little bit. So at any rate, we're gonna go ahead and shape the fronts of those teeth. And again, it's gonna be every other one. And then we're gonna invert it in, uh, and then switch the blade about 10 or 11 degrees in the opposite angle and then do every other every other tooth again because this blade is so big it's 30 some odd inch across I don't know 32 inch or better um, I'm going to try something a little different. 
uh, because that was a little awkward reaching all the way across the blade to do that one side. You can see obviously I've tilted it the other direction so I can do every other tooth on the other side as far as the angle is concerned. But I'm going to go around the back side and try to pull that uh, into me instead of reaching all the way across the blade. I'm uh, just going to give that a shot and see what happens. I definitely enjoyed that a lot better. Uh, definitely more convenient for me as an operator to be back there pulling it through. And I was still able to utilize my witness marks to make sure that I was definitely on target with the angles that we were trying to maintain. So now all we got left to do is uh, set it. And then um, after it's set, I think we're gonna put her back on the saw rig and see what happens. Well, I've returned the blade to, uh, to flat, um, perfectly horizontal, and we're getting ready to set every other tooth and then we're going to invert the blade and set every other tooth the opposite direction from the back side. Okay, time to turn him over. There's the start. Well, here you have it. The completed, uh, the completed blade. I've got uh, the gullets all fairly evenly uh, the same depth all the way down to our, remember the gullet radius. Uh, we've got the, uh, the, the angles, the way we decided uh, they needed to be done. And it's, uh, it's looking really, really pretty doggone good. So um, there were some obvious uh, rough spots, you know, along the way because, and uh, in using the machine, I found out there are some things that need to be, uh, need to be adjusted. Like um, the set screws keep bouncing loose and things like that, you know, especially whenever I was hammering on the uh, blade, actually setting the teeth, um, those things kept bouncing loose on me, and that's not good. I don't like that at all, so I may have to give some attention to that. Well, at any rate, that was a pretty interesting direction uh, we ended up taking with the uh, uh, this this nearing the final episode of the uh, series on the Buzzsaw uh, remake, and then uh, when it come around to servicing the blade, I thought, you know, it's time to get this old bell saw out of um, sharpening machine out of dry dock. Been sitting in the corner for hell, 20, 25 years, at least that. Um, it's time to do something with that old dog. And so it's been a learning curve, and, um, but I learned a little bit about it and I think it actually turned out pretty good. You know, but I think because I've done so many of them by hand, made a little bit easier to figure out what they got in mind. Uh, again, I don't do this professionally, wouldn't even attempt to tell y'all that, that this is the right way to do it or anything. Uh, hell, I don't even know the correct names for all the different uh, uh, angles and all that stuff, you know, on these teeth. I just know what worked, you know, based on what uh, what we've done, you know, for years and years and what the old man taught me back in the day. But at any rate, I'm tickled to death to have this addition to the shop. I just kind of am sorry that I didn't bring it out, uh, you know, and get her fired up, you know, 20 years ago. Saved me a hell of a lot of hand filing. Um, and hand filing on them saw rigs is not fun. Uh, it's it's aggravating to take the blade off. Once you take the blade off, you got to figure out how to how to chuck it up in a vise, and that's not ever pleasant. Uh, or you just jam a angled piece of wood down alongside the blade, and then have a go at it right out there in the in the in the middle of the cold weather, with wind blowing up your tail, and uh, it's not a whole lot of fun either. But at any rate, I'm thinking this is the end of uh, possibly I hope part eight in the series of the Buzzsaw remake slash 800 Ford first start in a number of years, slash carburetor rebuild, uh, slash figuring out a Foley Bell saw, saw sharpening machine. 
So, I tell you what, this is Dragon Man 44, and I am out of here.